So let me say, generally speaking, if I was a typical law firm or, or starting off a new company or a startup, right, whether I'm a lawyer, a doctor, a CPA, or just a business owner, I would allocate a substantial amount of my available revenue, my time and resources, my team members being properly trained to building the brand. Okay, mm -hmm. to making connections, to networking online. I think it's really, really important. When I look back on my career, what's allowed me to build a global brand and people around the world and have business opportunities and speaking to opportunities from all over the place is doing what I just described. In other words, allocating a great deal of my time to marketing and branding. Now, I'm not a big fan of the term marketing, especially when it applies to digital. We're talking about the same thing. It is marketing, but I look at it more as relationship building. Um, okay. SEO, right? Okay. Search engine optimization. A uh, long time ago, I coined the phrase social engineering optimization. It has more to do with social relationships in my in my view. And as a lawyer that's that's trying to walk that talk, it surprises a lot of people because most people are used to late night lawyer television ads. Right. And I don't like those. They don't they don't work on social media. They shouldn't work on social media. So I've kind of taken a different approach. So the short answer is, I think a substantial amount of your annual business building budget, and this includes bringing your team members in and teaching them how to interact and respond to questions and use a lot of this technology. I think the more you can spend to do that, the better off you're going to be three, five, 10, 20 years down the line. With respect to my firm, a little bit different. We're, we have our marketing and advertising budget is almost zero, believe it or not. Okay. And, and I just want to be honest with people. Uh, what we've done is we laid that foundation. We've allocated with team members uh, how to handle different aspects of what you see each day. And um, we're in a unique position where we're at the other end of the spectrum where we've got this, this global network and brand set up. Our channels are firing on all cylinders other, other than one that's kind of changed drastically over the six months. And I'm not going to go into names and, and, and social media platforms, but it has, but that is what it is. Um, and so what we're doing is we're, we're kind of like, what you see is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to me and I've got, you know, everything else floating underwater, just pushing it forward. I think it's really important to do though. And I think that moving forward, if you, you know, you could be the best, you could be the best lawyer in town, but if nobody knows who you are, then you're going to have a hard time paying the monthly bills. And so you got to do what you got to do to get your name out there, to get your brand out there, to toot your own horn in a way that's informative and helpful while building community at the same time. And I think if, if, you, if you're able to do that, spending a $1 a month or $10,000 a month for a smaller firm, then I say, do it. You got to do what you need to do to get the job done. Amazing answer. And another question based on this answer, how much, how would you ventilate the difference between working on the corporate brand of a law firm, which is often the case, the name of the partners together sure. or brand new name and the personal brand itself of the lawyer. Uh, and it's a very tricky question because sure. as of today, I think if I was the marketing manager of a law firm, I would spend a lot of time thinking, do I need to promote my corporate brand or my two law um, lawyers, stars lawyer in my firm and go fully onto a blog around them, a YouTube channel around them, a, blog, a podcast <laughs> with them. How would you do that? Well, first of all, I would I would do an inventory as to who in the firm um, might we want to highlight. Do they have the types of personalities that would complement a digital sure. brand? That's the first thing. Because some people, uh, they just don't. Who, they probably they just don't, right? And so you probably shouldn't put them out as the face of the law firm. But I'll tell you. When I look at entrepreneurs, whether you like these people or you hate these people or you feel indifferent about these people, when I talk, you know, when I mention Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg or uh, yeah, Virgin yeah. Atlantic's Richard Branson, right? Um, you know, just mentioning the names of these people bring out the emotion of the consumer. It mm. brings out your trust or distrust in the company. 
And I think it's critically important to blend the two. And that's what I'm getting at. For example, you can have a law firm who, who, where you're marketing their brand, their image. It's a corporate identity that people can relate to and trust large corporations. For example, if I, you know, at least here in the States or here in California, if I say in and out burger, Okay, people just start salivating over a good hamburger. It's a, it's a hamburger chain here in Southern California, and it's branching out across the country. In-N-Out Burger, I don't know who the owner of In-N-Out Burger is, but when someone says In-N-Out Burger, I think of palm trees, California, and a good burger, right? Especially if you like burgers. Uh, imagine if the owner of In-N-Out Burger was somebody that was active in the community, trying to make a difference, trying to help society be a better place had a good outgoing personality or someone in the firm or the company had those qualities, put them on video, have them do a podcast, have them do interviews, have them do commercials. It's a combination of all the above. So it's not one size fits all. It's what works best for you. What are your digital assets and what are your human assets? How can you incorporate all of these together? Maybe using someone like Ukraine, where it's like someone that knows what the, what the elements are to put them together, to blend them, to serve up that final dish or recipe that the consumer is going to enjoy. So it kind of depends on who you are, what you've got going for you, and what are your digital and human assets to make it all happen. I love that so much. And it makes me think that, you know, HubSpot at the very beginning of the software, when oh. they killed that content marketing, they used to have one advice within a company. Every single person in this company needs to create content one way or another. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to show up on a video, just write a blog post. If you at least connect your social account to the name of HubSpot and spread and share all the contents that are shared, you need to involve the team. So even if a lawyer is more introvert than another one, it can still be part of the construction, not maybe of a personal brand, but at least of the corporate firm. I 100% I agree with you. You said a major uh, part of the budget, but just to have an idea of the number, 20%, 30%, 50%, just- So, so, so you know, my son graduated from SC uh, last year and took a position at VaynerMedia in, L in LA. He's a post-creative strategist. And Gary yeah. and I have known each other for a long time. You know, however people feel about Gary and VaynerMedia, they either love him or they hate him. Uh, most people love him. The, mm -hmm. the, the deal is, if you look at how Gary's built his business over the years, okay, he went from one person on a YouTube channel on Wine Library talking about wine, but he blended in his personality. He blended in his business approach to having empathy and being positive and being a team player into his brand. So as he and his brother AJ started VaynerMedia, it went from two people to 1,800 people and is now you know a leading provider. The point is, it was all of the above. And what Gary will tell you is, you know, he's got a crew of what, 20 or 30 people basically that are creating content about him, about where he's traveling, about who he's meeting with, about who he's having 15 minute interviews with, and they're filming it from different angles. Uh, and it's because of this content that, that he's been able to amplify his brand which brings in clients, which builds the agency. That's so true. what I would suggest, if I was starting all over again, and mm -hmm. you know, with the revenue that I had coming in my first five years of practicing law, which wasn't a lot, uh, because I started off on my own, and I just hustled and made it happen. But what I would do different is, instead of maybe buying that home on year three, or buying that nice car you know, after the second year of practice or taking that expensive trip, I would have instead saved that money and hired a group of four or five people to do what we watched Gary do. Okay. Those four or five people are following me to depositions in the courthouse. They're, they're helping me uh, put together trending news stories. So when there's a breaking news story that everybody around the world's talking about that has a legal flavor to it, um, they're helping me create content on all the platforms. Now, remember, we didn't have all of this back in the mid to late 80s when I started practicing. So I don't feel like I missed out on anything. I had to do it the hard way, one at a time, right? But I think in today's world, you give me four or five people. Uh, so my budget would be probably, you know, my budget would probably be 
50 to $100,000 a year for four to five quality content creators who are young, who are eager, who are hungry, that are willing to work and, and do this, bring them into the law firm, into the dental practice, into the medical practice, into the CPA practice, and create content much like Gary's doing at Vayner. And I think you can really just expand your brand from local to global at an exponentially fast pace, unlike anyone else traditionally might do. That's what I would do different. And so even if I had to take out loans to do that, I would absolutely double down at getting as many people as I needed to create as much content as I can to distribute on all the different channels in a way that complement TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube shorts, Instagram <coughs> shorts, interviews like this. Um, and if I didn't have the money to do that, Kareen, what I would be doing is I would be reaching out and having a weekly show interviewing senior partners of other law firms that don't practice the type of law that I practice, shining a light on them, interviewing them. How did they get started? What got them interested in the law? What's their favorite case that they've handled? I'd be building relationships with people like that across the country, basically with the idea of not only shining a light on really good people, but also building referral relationships. Mm -hmm. Because when they need to refer a client to a California firm, I'm going to be top of mind because of the relationship we built in both pre-show, during the show, and post-show production. So that's the inexpensive way of building these relationships and building that brand. But I would try to do a combination of two. And it's not how much money I would spend. It's what funds do I have available? Are there funds that I'm spending someplace else that I probably don't need to be spending? And can I allocate that back into building a content creation team or hiring someone, okay, to do this for me, someone who I trust, someone who understands my mindset that can basically do this for me. But I'm going to need a couple of people to shoot <laughs> content every single day, just like Gary, to, to create this momentum to take things to the to the next step. What do you think about that? Do you think that's something that might work? Do you think what are your suggestions on that? I'm just curious. If I give you $15,000 budget in 6 months to start from zero and launch a practice and get the first customers, how would you spend it? You pretty much answered it and it was amazing creating content ever, as much as you can. That was brilliant. So I'm not going to ask twice unless if you want to add something. Well, uh, let me add something because this okay. is this is the part that I think a lot of people forget about is when I have young lawyers come in and watch me give an opening, a closing argument, for example, and I, this happens down in our courthouses. Um, afterwards, they'll ask me, well, Mr. Jackson, how did you know how to focus on that issue? Why were you standing where you were standing? Why were you focusing on that one juror, right? And they're looking for that magic pill, that app that they can download to learn how to do all this stuff. And I tell them, it's just from doing this for, you know, years after years after years, from making mistakes, from constant and never ending improvement, from putting in the time. That's, that's how I knew which buttons to push this morning with this jury on this case. And the $15,000 investment question, all I would say is, I absolutely would allocate a majority of those funds to building my brand like we discussed. Having said that, if I was brand new starting over, I'd also be up at four in the morning. So from four to eight or four to nine, I would be spending as much time as I needed to, to learn the technology, to learn the things that we've talked about. When all of my friends are wrapping up the day at five o'clock and, and, and they're having enjoying cocktail hour at the local watering hole, I probably uh, would join them for one drink and then come home and spend the next four or five hours doubling down on everything that has to do with my practice. And I would do that for one or two straight years. I would just absolutely out hustle every other new lawyer in town that was also starting off his, her, or their practice during the same period of time. Frankly, every partner in town on every established law firm. I'd combine that hustle with that $15,000 to build a dynasty. That's my answer. 